praise your God. Hallelujah. 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 Glory to God. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you. I have one question to ask. When you're done, Amen. I will enter, hallelujah, Amen. his gates with thanksgiving in my heart. Hallelujah. I will enter his courts with praise. Glory. I will say, this is the day that Yahweh has made. I will rejoice because he has made me glad. Hallelujah. Did he make you glad? Then rejoice. I will rejoice for he has made me glad. Hallelujah. Praise Yahweh for this blessed Sabbath day. Our hope, hallelujah, is built on nothing less than Yahushua's redeeming blood and righteousness. So we will never trust the sweetest frame, but we will lean on Yahushua's name. And Yahushua, the solid rock, will stand. Every other ground is sinking sand. Every other ground is sinking sand. His oath, his covenant, his blood supports me in the whelming flood. When all around my soul gives way, he then is all my hope and stay. On your horse, you are the solid rock we stand. Every, every, every other ground is sinking sand. All other ground is sinking sand. And if we stand on Yahushua, Amen. then we must stand on the word. Amen. So join me in welcoming our pastor as he gives us the word for today. Hallelujah. Give him a round of applause as he comes. Please rise. From the inside. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let praises rise from the inside. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Because he is indeed worthy to be praised. He is indeed worthy to be praised. Let praises rise, brethren. On the inside of me. Hallelujah. 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 Because he deserves all the praise. He deserves all the honor. He deserves all the praise. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We do not understand the God that we serve. Sometimes be like we are nice. We can't praise God. But he is to be praised. Amen. The psalmist said, From the right of the sun to the going down, the same his name is worthy to be praised. So hallelujah. 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 The praises should rise from the inside. Let me delight. Let him delight in your praise. For he indeed inhabits. In the praises of his people. So I just want to welcome you. I just want to welcome you in the name of our great King and Lord, Yahushua. The Messiah will welcome you. Those who are joining us on the World Wide Web. And those who are here on the ground. I greet you in the precious name of Yeshua. As we close off the week of Unleavened Bread. And we continue the week, the feast of weeks. Yes, Hallelujah. Indeed, Father, we want to thank you Amen. for your goodness towards us. We want to Amen. thank you for the son who died for our stead. Amen. We should have died. We were lost and undone. Amen. But you sent your son to die for our sins. And so we walk and we seek to walk unleavened without sin, sinless. And we pray that you will help us, Father, to walk this walk as you lead us into your truth. Amen. You teach us your ways yes, and your path. Amen. We thank you. In Yeshua's name. Amen.
Amen. Brethren, we, we started the Feast of Unleavened Bread on, on, on Sabbath last. We closed the feast today. We, 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 I started and looked at you know, the reason why, why Yeshua died, died. Why died. And uh, just want to recap. Just want to re re recap quickly and then move on. It will, will not be as long as last time because we would have uh, covered the major part of my, of my presentation. So I, I, I put to you this table. Just recap that Yeshua's death facilitated three functions or three purposes. And the, the first of the three is redemption. So is death, brethren, as we go into the word, as we seek to know more about him, the first purpose, or uh, one of the purposes, is redemption. And based on, based on the texts that were proffered, the texts that were given, we understand that the Passover is that which is used to picture this redemption that, that Yahweh's firstborn was locked up in bondage, was tied up, was tangled up in bondage, and he had to release them. He had to redeem the firstborn. And we see also some texts where, you know, it said, when your children ask you, why do you do this? Tell them, because we were in bondage and with a stretched out arm, with a strong arm, Yahweh has taken us out of Egypt, redeemed us out of Egypt, Amen. redeemed us from the bondage of sin. All right, and that's the first. So, so Passover, we would understand and redemption is facilitated by blood. So the catalyst for redemption is blood. That which facilitates redemption. So Yeshua's death, Yeshua's blood facilitates redemption. The second purpose of his death, and we have to understand, brethren, that he could not have died three times for each purpose. All right? I want to watch it carefully now. So he, he couldn't die to, the, to, to redeem mankind. And then later on, no, he died again no, to, to cause, to facilitate atonement, which is forgiveness of sin. And then die later on again no, to facilitate the covenant. Huh? You follow me? So one death would have covered all three and then we see the three things here, the three things here. One, the Passover. Two, the atonement. And three, the renewal of the covenant. What we call the new covenant. And all three purposes are catalyzed, are facilitated by what? Blood. The blood of prevail. The blood of the risen lamb. It has power to save. It has power to redeem. It has power to forgive sins. It has power to create the, the, the new covenant. That is what we looked at on Sabbath. This is in a nutshell. We looked at on Sabbath. And this is a major part. I want you to take a picture of this. I want you to hold this. I want you to understand this very carefully because this is important. 
Because you're going, to, you're going to also understand that the Passover, and there's no way, let me see if I've done the screen here. Right, so the redemption, which is celebrated by the Passover, is facilitated by his death. Watch carefully now. Passover itself does not celebrate Yeshua's death. But the redemption of mankind. And this is where, and this is where the issue is. This is where we have gone. We have earned in our teaching, in the, in the doctrine. Because we have been teaching that, that, that Passover is, is you to celebrate Christ's death, Yeshua's death. So this is it. So let's go again. So the redemption, which is celebrated by the Passover, is facilitated by his death. Passover itself does not celebrate Yeshua's death. So we don't use Passover to celebrate his death. But Passover is to be used to celebrate the redemption of mankind. That is what Passover is. Passover is redemption. Passover is redeeming. The firstborn. Redeeming. That's what it is. And we have seen also, as I show you, that which Yeshua gave the disciple to use to celebrate his death. I showed you. We're going to, we'll get back to it because we have to understand that. Right? So, so Passover is a celebration of the redemption of mankind. So when we, when we have Passover, and I said when we have Passover because we have, what we have been having is the bread and the wine. But well, this is, this you need to understand now. Because if we understand what the bread and the wine signifies and we we look at some text um last sabbath we're going to look at them again this sabbath um this is sabbath because today is a sabbath day you will understand that the bread and the wine is not the passover and we have been taught that the bread and the wine are uh, replaced the passover meal mean brethren you know? That we have not been partaking of the Passover. It would mean that we have never taken the Passover before. We have been celebrating his death with the bread and the wine, but we have not been celebrating redemption with the Passover meal. It's not the bread and the wine. Silence. It's clear in scriptures, brethren. It's clear the Passover is redemption. And there's nowhere in no scripture that you have in your Bible that shows that Yeshua. I replace the meal, the Passover meal with the bread and wine. There's no way you, you could search the entire Bible from, from, from Genesis to Revelation. You will not find it. There's no hint of it anywhere at all. That you're sure I'd replace the Passover meal with bread and wine. Never. You will never see it. It's nowhere. And that's what we are taught. We had taught that. Somebody sat down and wrote it on a piece of paper and taught us that. That Yeshua had changed. That Yeshua had changed the law. We taught that. So Yeshua, brethren, gave his disciple bread and wine. For two reasons, 
And we, show, we, we saw the reasons. We saw them. Last Sabbath. So if you don't remember, go back to the sermon. I think the sermon is on the YouTube page. The Assembly of Israel. Find it and, and, and listen again. It was a little, a bit, a little long. Or it was what? One, one over 40 minutes. But listen again. Spend some time. Yeshua, Yeshua gave his disciples the bread and the wine for two reasons. We see it. The first reason was to celebrate his death. To show the Lord's death. The, the bread and the wine. And to symbolize the ratification of the new covenant. We're coming back to it. But I'm, bringing, I'm going to give you the text again. The texts are clear. The texts are plain. No private interpretation. Texts are clear. So the bread and the wine that we have been partaking of on the 14th day of the month of the bread and the wine that Yeshua gave the disciple on the 14th in the evening after sunset. He gave them bread and wine after supper, after a meal. And he gave them it and, 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 and he told them the reason why he gave them this and um, they should eat of it. And he said, as often as you eat this, you do it. You are showing my, what? My death has over his redemption. And redemption is facilitated by death. We know that. So this means, brethren, that the bread and the wine eaten on the 14th of Abib annually is not the Passover meal. Because the Bible tells us what should be the Passover meal. And you know it. Roasted lamb with bitter herb. And whatever it is. You know it. Look in the script in the text for it. That has not changed. It has not changed. It has not changed. So let's move on. Let's see if it's the same thing. Right? I said this earlier. There's no evidence in scripture to prove that Yeshua has changed the Passover meal from roasted lamb, etc., to bread and wine. No text, no scripture. You cannot find it. You cannot find it. No matter what you do, no matter how much you read, no matter how much you interpret, you will not see it. For not one jot or tittle shall in no wise pass from the law till all be fulfilled. Amen. Virgin, we are not about pomp and pride. We are about excitement. We are about the word. We are about the word. Thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. Thy word. Thy word is truth. Thy word, David said, I, I am, am more learned than my teacher because what? I have kept your word. I know your word. So I know what to do. I know how to live. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We are called to know the word and to live by the word because what? Satan has deceived the whole world. The whole world has been deceived by Satan. Amen. Not a few, the whole world. We have to understand it, brethren. No evidence. So let's move on now. So last week, so on Sabbath gone, last week we, we saw the deaths of Yeshua as our Passover. Celebrated Passover redemption. And now the second purpose is the death as the atonement. Lamb, the atonement lamb, and we and we take that up in, in Isaiah 53, verse 3 to 8, and verse 10. And watch this now. He was despised and rejected of men. A man of sorrows and acquainted with grief. And we hid as it were our faces from him. He was despised. 
and we esteemed him not. Surely he had borne our griefs. He has what? Carried our griefs. He had carried our sorrows. All of what we should bear, he, he bore them. Yet we esteem him stricken, smitten of God and afflicted. But he was wounded for our transgression. Hallelujah. He was wounded for our transgression, for our sins. He was bruised for our iniquity, our wickedness, our wantonness, our moving away from, God, from Yahweh. He was bruised for that. The chastisement of our peace was upon him. And with his tribe we are healed. We are forgiven because of his death. Hallelujah. 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 Verse 6. All we like sheep have gone astray. We have turned everyone to his own way. Everybody doing their own thing. And the Lord hath laid on him. The iniquity of us all. Um, imagine that. So all of us are our own thing. Our own teaching, our own whatever it is. But he was the one who got all of that. Stricken. He was oppressed and he was afflicted, yet he opened at his mouth. He was brought the lamb to the slaughter. And as a sheep before sharers is dumb, so he opened not his mouth. He was taken from prison and from judgment. And who shall declare his generation? For he was cut off out of the land of the living. For what? The transgression of my people was he stricken. It pleased the Lord Yahweh to bruise him. He had put him to grief and shame. When thou shalt make... Watch this now. This is it. When thou shalt... Make his soul a what? Offering for sin, atonement. Yeah, atonement. So he is our atonement. An offering for sin. Hallelujah. Atonement. John 1, 29. The next day, John saw Yeshua come in and said, Behold the Lamb of Yah, the Lamb of God. Wait, what? Take it away, the sins of the world. The, this, this whole thing mean what? Atonement. Behold the Lamb of God, who is the atonement, who have facilitated the atonement. Removal of sin. Amen. So, so is death redeem us? We pass over is death also remove our sins because you can be redeemed but is still in sin so redemption was not the full thing or the complete thing because you can be redeemed i can buy you back but you're still sin so i don't need to facilitate you being forgiven when you sin the Lamb of God would take away the sins of the world. Romans 4.25 Who was delivered for our offenses and was raised again for our justification. Look at the text. The atonement. The atonement. The atonement. 1 Corinthians 15.3.4 And this is Paul speaking now. For I delivered unto you first of all that which I also received. All that Yeshua died for our sins according to the scriptures. And that he was buried. And he rose again. This third day according to the scriptures. This third day according to the scriptures. Died for our sins again. Atonement. And in Hebrews 9, 28, for Yeshua was once offered to bear the sins of many. And unto them that look for him shall he appear 
the second time without sin unto salvation. So there are tons of scriptures to show that Yeshua's death facilitates the forgiveness of sin, but we have missed it, that it also facilitates the redemption. And so we have mixed up the redemption and the atonement, and we put everything in one and call it no. And I said, to, I said to you last week, is, and this is why many churches say there's no need for atonement again. I, I, the other sister was coming to this church and she said she doesn't keep atonement because atonement has been finished, has been accomplished. She said that because they died already. She said once she keeps pass over, then she, does, she doesn't need to keep atonement. And that is error. That is false. Because Passover is not atonement. And Passover does not celebrate the forgiveness of sin. What it does celebrate is your redemption. I want you to get to bed. I want you to understand this. I want you to understand this. This is not, this is not, not any jump up church. This, this is serious teaching something. This is Bible class. This is teaching. This is, this is knowledge. This is word. This is word. So atonement has not been completed. Because if that was completed, then all our sins would have already been removed and we would be living sinless now. It's, it's, it's in sin. Sin around the same way. But Yahshua could, we could wait until he returns for him to die to atone sinfully. The one death facilitates that to come. The one death cause redemption, the one death facilitates the torment, and the one death will facilitate the new covenant to come. Uh, the renewal of the covenant, because the one covenant that he has, and he keeps renewing it. Um, 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 um. Look at First Peter 2, verse 21 to 26. For even here unto were we called, because Yeshua also suffered for us, leaving us an example that you should follow his steps. You did no sin, who, who did no sin, that is Yeshua, did no sin, neither was guile found in his mouth, who when he was reviled, reviled not again, when he suffered, he threatened not, but committed himself to him that judge righteously. Who his own self bear our sins in his own body on the tree that we being dead to sin should live when unto righteousness. So when we should have died, when we should have been nailed to the tree because we were cursed and the scripture said, curse is anyone who is nailed on a tree. We should have been nailed to the tree. We should have died, but he took our place. He facilitated the atonement. That is what was his, fun his function, one of the three functions of his death. He bear our sins in his own body on the tree, that we, being dead to sin, should live unto righteousness. By whose stripes you were healed. For you were as sheep going astray, but are now returned unto the shepherd and the bishop of our soul. Redemption, this is not in virgin. So we were sheep gone astray. Gone astray. And we were re returned. We were brought back. We were redeemed. We were ransomed. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So, so in this passage, Peter is talking about two things. Redemption and atonement. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. 1 Corinthians 11 verse 26. And this is what Paul said that Yeshua said to him. As often as you eat this bread, watch now. As often as you eat this bread 
and drink this, this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death till he come. This is what we do to what? To proclaim the Lord's death, to celebrate Yeshua's death. And it's the death that facilitates three things. I want us to understand, brethren. This is, this is important. It's one death. I want, I want to understand it. It's one single death. But the one single death facilitates the three functions. The one, one to three. One to three. We have not seen any text in the scriptures that was commanded, anything was commanded to celebrate his death. Is that overall? We don't say anything. In, 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 we don't. We don't say that. Passover is redemption, and the bread is walking sinless. Pentecost is whatever. We don't say anything about his death to so celebrate his death. It was Yeshua who who put this in place before he died. And as often as you do this, to eat the bread and drink the wine, you are proclaiming my death. Till me come. Never say proclaim your redemption. Proclaim my death. One death, three functions. I believe it to every death. One death, three functions. One blood, three functions. All right? So that's so so we see that he died for our redemption. And we see that he died for our sin. And the, th and the third function now is at, at, we're soon finished. Almost finished. The third, the death as the new covenant ratifier. The, the person who ratifies the new covenant. New covenant ratifier. Hebrews chapter 8, verse 6 to 13. And let's read that now nicely now. Very Carefully. But now art he obtained a more excellent ministry by how much also he is a mediator of a what? A better covenant which was established upon better promises. For if that first covenant of that first had been faultless, and I want, and now we're going to show you that the new covenant or the renewed covenant has not been done yet. The covenant has not been renewed. Has not been renewed as yet. But his death facilitates it because we can't wait until it's time then you come back down to, to die. So the one death again facilitated that. Watch. For verse 8, for finding fault in them, them who? Finding fault in them, what? The law? The what? The people, very good. So, finding fault in the people of Israel, he said, uh, what is now? This is the prophecy now. Behold, the days come, said the Lord, when I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and the house of Judah, and I want you to watch carefully with whom the new covenant will be made. I will make a new covenant, a renewed covenant with the house of Israel and with the house of Judah. Not according, verse 9, to the covenant made with their Fathers, a day when I took them by the hand and lead them out of the land of Egypt because they continued not in my covenant and I regarded them not, said the Lord. Found fault in Israel. Found fault with Israel. Hebrew 9, 16 to 22, we... For where a testament is, there must also be a necessity 
to be the death of the testator. So watch this now, watch this now. You cannot have a covenant and something not dead. Not you cannot have a covenant. The person, the covenant cannot be ratified. The covenant cannot be properly in place unless the testator dies. Right? For a testament is a force after men are dead. I mean, dead not anything is said. Otherwise, it is of no strength at all while the testator live. Whereupon neither the first testament was dedicated without blood. For when Moses had spoken every precepts to all the people according to the law, he took the blood of calves and of goats and water and scarlet wool and isop and he sprinkled both the book and all the people. So here they were just saying that listen to me. No covenant is set. No covenant is set without blood. And so he, he, and so he, he brought us back into at Mount Sinai and said, when Moses was ratifying the covenant between Yahweh and Israel, he killed, he took the blood of calves and of goats and with water and with scarlet wool and with isop and he sprinkled both the book that has the conditions of the covenant with the law, and then he sprinkled the people. So the blood was on the people to show that they were in covenant with Yahweh. Saying, verse 20, this is the blood of the testament which Yahweh had enjoined unto you. Verse 21, Moreover, he sprinkled with the blood both the tabernacle and all the vessels of the ministry, and almost all things are by law pur purged by blood. And without shedding of blood, there is no remission. So here I'm saying, right, I said, uh, you need blood for sin to be removed, and you need blood for a covenant to be ratified. You need blood. And so the blood that was shed, that's a Yeshua's blood now. And taking care of the atonement and taking care of the, the covenant. Follow me carefully. Hebrews 12, 24. And to Yeshua, the, meditate, the, the mediator of the new covenant, and to the blood of sprinkling that speak better things than that of Abel's blood. Looking at Yeshua, we're looking at his death, his bloodshed was not only for redemption, not only for forgiveness of sin, but also for the renewal of the covenant. Three things, three purposes, three functions of his, his death, of the blood, the same blood. Matthew 26, verse 26 to 28. And as they were eating, Yeshua took bread and blessed it. He broke it. He gave to his disciples and he said, Take, eat, this is my body. And he took the cup and he gave thanks and, uh, and gave it to them saying, drink ye all of it, for this is my blood of the what? New, new covenant, new testament, which is shed for many, for. So two things we hear there, brethren, what you know? Is it blood of, my, of the new testament, the new covenant, and the same blood was shed for the remission of sin. So it's two things that Yeshua told them. He said nothing to them about Passover. This blood, this wine that you are drinking, represents the blood that was shed for the New Testament, New Covenant, and for the remission of sin. Watch it carefully. Luke 22, verse 17 to 20. Almost finished. And he received a cup. And when he had given thanks, he said, Take this. I want to, 
I want, want when you're reading, tell me if you hear him say anything about this is the meal that you must eat for Passover as of tonight. Don't look for it. I want, I'm, uh, I'm giving a challenge. Everybody must search the, search the Bible to find out where in it we see where Yeshua said that the bread and the wine is the Passover meal. I want you to find it and present it by next Sabbath. See, this is a serious thing. This is a serious thing. You know? And thank God that we have not been taking the Passover because we really shouldn't take it without being circumcised. Sure. That's another argument again. Oh, help us, Father. Oh, the blood prevails, the blood of the risen Lamb. Power to save. Just as in olden days, the blood of no matter what others say, thank God the blood. Of, come on, come. The blood prevail, the blood of the risen Lamb. A word to save, just as in olden days, the blood of hope. The seeds and God, the blood prevail. So, so don't get me wrong. No, what you've been doing a year time with the bread and the wine is appropriate and is correct and it's to be done because that what we do based on the text that we've been looking at. It was to celebrate the death of Yeshua. It was. To his death and to celebrate the new covenant that is to come. The Passover is redemption and as his own thing that was set in scriptures, set in the law, set in the law, in the command, set there. Nothing changed. He, Luke 22, verse 17 to 20, and he received a cup. And when he had given thanks, he said, Take this and divide among yourselves. For I say unto you, I shall not drink from this henceforth from the fruit of the vine until the kingdom of God comes. And he took the bread and without giving thanks, he broke it. He gave it to them and said, this is the blood which is given for you. This do in remembrance of my, of me, of my death. That's a Passover. That's not Passover. Yes, the death is redemption. The death caused redemption. Which is Passover. The death also caused atonement. So you need to know which one he's talking about now. So, so this is not to remember he and the cup in like manner after supper, saying this cup is the new testament in my blood. Even that which is poured out for you. So here we are seeing now the new, we are seeing here the new covenant and the blood poured for you, which is a atonement. One blood atone, one blood renew, one blood redeem. One blood. Not two blood, not three blood. One blood. Let's move on. Almost finished. First Corinthians chapter 11, 23, 26. For again, Paul is saying, so I'm giving you the text over and over. Paul is saying, No, I receive the Lord, that which also I deliver unto you is what I got. Paul said, I am telling you. Yeshua, tell me one thing, and I'm telling you what he told me. Nothing, nothing more or less. That the Lord Yeshua, the same night. The same night of the 14 in which he was, he was betrayed. The same night of the 14th in which he was betrayed. He took bread. He took bread the same night. Paul is saying, looking in the state to see if he said, if Yahshua told him that this is what he must, must start to use for Passover now. Look at it. 
he took bread, verse 24, and when he had given thanks, he break the bread. And he said, take it. This is my body which was broken for you. This is what you used to celebrate me, my death. This do in remembrance of me. After the same man, he took the cup. When he had supped, he said, this cup is the New Testament up in my blood. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. First, often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you do what? Show the Lord's death till he comes. Now, the problem is, brethren, it's because he died and the Passover there. Because the text says, as often as you eat this bread and this wine, you are showing my death. But he died and the Passover there. And so in error, we are saying the Passover is used to celebrate his death. When the Passover is to celebrate what? The redemption of mankind. Facilitated by his death door. I forget his number, I have to understand it. So what was given to celebrate his death was the bread and the wine, and that was, and that was done on the 14th day of the month. We are studying the, what is the Passover, brethren, pray for prayer as a team. Look into it to give you a fulsome study, a fulsome detail of the Passover itself. We're getting there. Pray for the team. 1 Corinthians 11, 7. Wherefore, whosoever shall eat the bread or drink the cup of the Lord in an unworthy manner shall be guilty of the body and the blood. Anybody shall eat the body and the bread, the, the bread and the wine in an, an unworthy manner shall be Guilty of the Lord body. Question here. You know, question, I want you to, to, to think about this, this question now. So the Passover in those days, the Passover was eaten by uh, who? Who ate the Passover in those days? Who ate the Passover? Everybody in Israel? Even the children too? Did you not also eat Passover in those days? The boys and the girls and the babies. Huh? Every, yes. Yeah, man. So everybody ate Passover in those days. So why is only adults take this new type of Passover? What is? You're correct. Because at the Passover, the law said every man in Egypt, everybody in Egypt is um, in Egypt should eat. So I'm showing you that, 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 that the bread and wine is not the Passover. It's not the Passover meal. It's not the Passover meal. The text are there. We don't, we don't need to go, um, to, to, to go on and uh, on, uh, on. It's there. It's there all over and over. So watch this now. So we, we're, we're going to close up now with. with the question, what does the New Testament, New Covenant entail? So we are told, coming down, so some time for lunch. So we are told that the, well, we are now under the New, the new Covenant. Huh? So we have some church called the New Testament Church of God. Because it's New Testament now. Right? And some say the New Covenant Church of the firstborn. And they were told that now we cut out the Old Testament. No, no, watch, watch error, no, watch error. Look at error at play. Look at, look at falls at play now. Look at deception at play. So we are told now that because we're not under the new covenant, are the new testament now. So we cut out Genesis to, to Malachi. So we don't read it with, with, with so, so we are now uh, we are now from what? From uh, Matthew. To Revelation. So we cut out Sabbath because Sabbath is in the Old Testament. And we cut out feast day because feast day is in the Old Testament. 
And we come to all oh, that we know, we know, know we leave, know we Jesus. And once you come to come to come to Christ and you you you, you believe, you are under the new, you are a new man. And you are you are not under the new covenant. So the new covenant they are saying does not have any law because you cut out the old covenant, the old testament. I wonder if you realize what is happening. Do you think about what these people are saying about new covenant? I am under new covenant, they say. So me cut out the old the old testament. So me cut out the law, me cut out the tour altogether. So the new covenant, no, for them. Is lawless, there's no law, there's no condition under the new covenant. You do as you like. You do as you what? As you like. And the new covenant, because all of the conditions, thou shall not, and you shall not, and you shall do this. All those cut out and the new covenant. They pay your own. All man for them self. All man does what is right in their own sight. Yeah. So they have brought the new covenant and the renewed covenant to a point with me that every man does what is right in his own sight. That is what the new covenant has become by, 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 by these teachers yeah. and leaders. So if you tell me that you're, you're under the new covenant and you're keeping the laws, then go on, all right, you're on the new covenant because you're keeping the last But at least give, give you a blind answer, yes. But, so let us see what the Bible says. Let's see what the word of God says about the new covenant and not what people say. Now people say about what the Bible says. Let's look at what the Bible says about the new covenant. Now what people say. Everybody have, everybody have their own like, thing to say. Let's go to the text. Let's go to the word. Let's go to the word. Then I finish. Text and I finish with you. In the question, we cannot ask question because time is nothing in the east. This is, this is Prophet Jeremiah now. And anybody who believe, anybody who, anybody believe in Jeremiah? Everybody accept Jeremiah's word, writing? Sure? All right. Let's see Jeremiah now. Jeremiah 31, verse 31. To 34, and this is not in the New Testament, no. Behold, the days come, said the Lord, that I will make a new covenant, I will renew the covenant with the house of Israel and with the house of Judah. What is the first thing under the new covenant? Israel, the, the covenant will be renewed. With Israel and Judah. Where is Israel and Judah? Where are they? Can you find them? So if there was a, re if there was a new covenant with Israel and Judah, they would have been one place in the land. No. But they are all over the place. Cannot evil. We, we can't evil. We don't even know who is who. And many of us might be, might be piece of Israel, piece of Judah, we don't even know. Because we were lost. Why didn't they had gone? So the first thing about the new covenant is it is being made with the house of Israel and the house of Judah in the days to come. In a day to come. Our days to come. That's the first thing. Right down in the book. The detail of the covenant. Yes, ma'am. Yes, because a new covenant, a new business now. Every man does what is right in their own sight. That's not like Israeli. That looks like Israel. Man do it their own thing. So the first detail of the new covenant is that it will be made with the house of Israel and the house of Judah. And if you read carefully, when we like um, um, Ezekiel, Ezekiel said that the time will come when he will put the two sticks together. Two six, we say the dry bone, yes. Yeah. 
Damn in, 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 damn it, it is. Yes, damn in, it is. How about you, um, USA and, and Britain in prophecy? It's, uh, it's error. May I say it is error for those on Zoom? Error. The two sticks, Israel and Judah, will be brought back. Read Ezekiel and be, be one again. And at that point, the new covenant will be, because it will be renewed. At that point, at that point, the dry bones, can these bones live? Yes, they can, because you know, they can. The day is coming, said the Lord. Let's move, let's move on. Verse 32. Not according to the covenant I made with their father and Mount Sinai in the day that they took them by the hand and bring them out of the land of Egypt. This is Jeremiah now. This is not, this is not New Testament. Something. This is Jeremiah saying, you know, this is the Old Testament, if you want to call it that. With my covenant they break, although I was an husband unto them, said the Lord. But, what's now? But this is a covenant that I will make with the house of Israel. Look now, look here. Israel himself alone. Why? Because you bring them back together. Oh, reason Israel. You are Israel first, and then you break them to, in two pieces. Call peace, Israel part with Judah. But it is coming out based on um, Ezekiel that I'll bring them back together to form one nation, Israel. One nation, the two become one. After those days, watch this now. After those days, said the Lord, look at what will happen under the new covenant now. Watch this now. If you believe them, I watch this now. After those days, I will put my law. This is what will happen under the new covenant. I'll put the, my law in their inward parts. I'm going to write it in their hearts and will be their God and they shall be my people. And watch this now. This is very careful. This is very important now. They shall and they shall teach no more every man his neighbor and every man his brother saying, know the Lord. Why? Because all of them shall know me from the baby of them unto the grace of them, said the Lord. What this the new testament, the new covenant is saying, brethren, that listen to me, we know the church. We don't have to preach and teach and preach again. No more Bible studies. Because every picnic, every man, every jick, jack, and man, woman, and boy will know the law because the law will be on their hearts. Look at it, unless Jeremy Ranger, look at it, come, come again. They and they shall teach no more. Everyone is neighbor, and every man is brother saying, Know the Lord. I give it under the new covenant. They won't say to, say to each other, say, Go learn the law and thou shalt not kill, because everybody will know it and will follow it. For they shall all know me from the least of them to the greatest of them, said the Lord. And I'll forgive their iniquities and I will remember their sins. No more. This is a detail of the new covenant, the renewed covenant. Every man of the law, right in your heart. No teaching of the law. But this is with Israel and Judah. Israel and Judah will learn the time will come when this nation that God had called to be a light to the world will know the law written in their hearts. And they come to a point in the, in, in, in the mind, written in, in the mind, and then come to a point to know God for himself. No teaching of, of God. No teaching, not, not, not so much school. Can they know it themselves? Those plate is was implanted in the heart. This is serious something. Israel will, will walk according to the law of God, spotless, under the new covenant. We don't know. Sit there. Did sit there, sit there, sit there. Unless 
My Bible is have something different. They shall teach no more every man his neighbor and every man his brother saying, Know the Lord, for they shall all know me from the least of them unto the greatest of them. Said the Lord. Who said it? Said the Lord, not me, not pastor, not teacher, not priest, not rabbi. They shall know the Lord themselves. This is the detail of the new covenant. We're not finding any wills. Detail is detail. Detail of the new covenant. And then no, when, then when then when we read is, 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 um, Isaiah, Isaiah said, and seven men I go hold on to one, hold on to the skirt of one Israelite and said, We have heard of your God in, in, in Jerusalem, and we want to. So after God made the covenant with them now, the people of different nations will come up to, to, to join Israel. Because they have heard that the law is being taught in Israel, in Jerusalem, and they want to go up to learn it. That's how the Lord has set up his, his thing. Israel has not been put aside. No. This is the new covenant. We are not under the new covenant. Because we are still, we still have to teach the law. We still have to tell people to stop it killing. Yeah. Even in the very church where people, where people Christian and, and baptized and Holy Ghost fill and what are baptized and yes, one their mind is still sinning. They still are going out of foolishness, same way. And so you preach as them sin, same way. Yeah. And wicked. Yeah. Under the new covenant, the people will not be taught because the, the, the law will be on their heart. And they will do what they are to do. That is that, that is easy. That, that, that is an easier to, a better time to live in. As, what, what, what Isaiah said, they shall study war no more. Because, because the, 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 the law is in their heart, in their mind. The Holy Spirit would have written it in their minds. What a beautiful covenant. But we are told that we are in a new covenant, and so we cut out the law now. So we can do as we like. Hebrew now, Hebrew, 8 verse 10 to 30, the writer of Hebrew repeated what Jeremiah said. So if Jeremiah was incorrect, then the person who wrote Hebrew now and realized that Jeremiah was incorrect would not have repeated what Jeremiah said. For this is the covenant that I will make with who again? The house of Israel. One house, one nation. The house of Israel. After those days in the Lord, I will put my laws in their mind and write them in their hearts. And I will be to them a God. And they shall be to me a people. And they shall not teach every man his neighbor. And every man his brother saying, Know the Lord, for all shall know me from the least to the greatest. Yes, for I will be merciful to their unrighteousness, and their sins and their iniquity I will remember no more. In that, he said, a new covenant he had made the first old. And know that which decayed and waxed old is ready to vanish away. Now, it is noted, brethren, that um, Melchizedek gave wine and bread to Abraham. Same as though Yahshua gave wine and bread to his disciples. So, Yahshua, the, we, we are told that Yahshua is priest of the order of who? Melchizedek. You see it in Hebrew. And 
Melchizedek gave Abraham wine and bread. We need to do some further study in that. So the same Melchizedek, who was the high priest and king, gave bread and wine to Abraham. And the same Yeshua, who is the same high priest and king of the same order of Melchizedek, gave his disciple bread and wine. Right. Well, well, I don't know about that. That I can, that I can, I, I can say I don't know about that. But, but note that both of them were of the same order. And so the bread and the wine issue seem to be. Yeah, right. Make the sale, which is Jerusalem. Right, so Melchizedek was the king of Salem and high priest. And Yeshua, who is high priest now, and will be king of where? Jerusalem, because the Bible says that, that his throne will be in Jerusalem. So we see this, the both persons giving their people bread and wine. So bread and wine is good. So, they, so there's something about bread and wine, brethren. But it's not the Passover. Not the Passover. What? And it's not grape juice either. Not grape juice. <laughs> we look at it. What, what, what are we looking at it? We're looking, we're looking at it, right? So, so both of them give, um, and then there's a text, there's a text in the scripture where the wedding in Canaan, something that we need to look at. It. The wedding in Canaan, when, when, the, when the wine ran out, what happened when the wine ran out in Canaan, in the wedding in Canaan? Mary went to tell Yeshua, said, the wine done. And what, and what, is, what did he say to her? It's not my time. What do you mean by that? Not my time yet. So the wine finish is not my time yet, but yesterday, give some wine. So we need to understand what that message is. So we, so we, we, we can look at, look at that. So things are it. We'll look at with this wine thing here. Right? So the wine thing is not the wine thing is not, is not, is not a yesterday something. It's a long time something for milk is like a, a, a give wine and bread. And Yeshua give wine and bread too. Until wine I give out at, at, at the way of Canaan. And the wine run out. And Yeshua speak on the water and the water become wine. And the man says the best wine this. The best wine leave last. Normally at a wedding, the best wine eat first, drink first. And then you know, when the best wine run out, they give them a little refresh wine. But in this case now, the best wine leave a last. Very significant. Very significant. We, we look at it, brethren. Nothing is done or said out of consciousness without, without any significance. Right? Never done, never said. We're coming down now, coming down quickly. So, 18 Genesis 14, 18 to 20. Melchizedek is the king of Salem, which is, and Salem is Jerusalem. Right? So Salem is Jerusalem. So the king of Salem brought bread and wine, and he was a priest of the Most High, and he blessed him. So he was king and priest of the Most High, blessed him, and said, Blessed be Abraham the Most High God, possessor of the heaven and the earth. And blessed be the most high God which had delivered thine enemies in the hand. I think this was done, and this was done before Yahweh made a covenant with, with Abraham. Yeah. So the bread and drink up. Covenant, come up. Come up. Drink up the bread and wine. Covenant. All right? Bread and wine is not passed over. That Passover is covenant we're talking about. Right? That's why he said to, what did he say to the disciple? I will not eat this bread and drink this wine until what? We meet him in, in the kingdom, in the kingdom we have the covenant set up. We bring back the, the, the two together, bring back Israel together from all the islands of the sea. 
Coming down, Psalm 110, verse 4, the Lord hath sworn and he will not repent that you are the priests forever after the order of Melchizedek. Yeshua is the priest forever after the order of Melchizedek. And we close the last text, Hebrew 5, 6 to 10. And he said also in another place, thou art the priest forever, quoting from Psalm 110, verse 4. You are the priest forever after the order of Melchizedek. Who in the days of his flesh, when he had offered up prayers and supplication with, with strong crying and tears, unto him that was able to save him from death, and was heard in that he feared. Though he were a son, yet learned he obedience by the things which he suffered, Yeshua, and being made perfect, he became the author of eternal salvation unto all them that obey him, called of God, an high priest, after the order of Melchizedek. The great king and priest, Yahweh. So, in closing, brethren, I summarize in a few words the death of Yeshua facilitated three functions, three purposes. One, the deliverance of his people, which is celebrated by the Passover, as we see in the text. Two, the forgiveness of sin, which is atonement. And three, the renewal of the covenant, which is to come. Is that all three purposes are facilitated by blood being shed. The, the blood, the, the, the wine and the bread that we partake of the 14 is to commemorate the death of Yeshua. It is to commemorate the, or to anticipate the renewal of the covenant and but is not for a replacement to the Passover meal. The Passover meal remains as is. The Passover meal is not a sin sacrifice because for sin sacrifice, nobody eats the flesh of the meat. So the Passover lamb was not a sin sacrifice. If it was sin sacrifice, then it should not be eaten. If it was sin sacrifice, then you, then you, then, then Yeshua's death would have, would, would have um, put that aside. But, but the thing is, brethren, the law is set. We have to come to a point where we understand the word of God that and, uh, you know, I was saying to somebody, somebody was saying to me this morning that, you know, he heard this saying as I close that wherever truth leads you, just follow. Amen. Did you hear that? Amen. Wherever truth leads you, to go. Because truth is truth. Amen. And truth is the only way. The only right way. I thank you very much.